It's Raymond with Go Time Training, and we are now going into lower back help phase four. So you've um, went through mobility, you've reactivated and teach the core, you reactivated and woke up that booty. So now we want to make sure that we do everything in good form and good technique. Sometimes this is a missing piece. People go through all those beginning aspects and they do a lot of the stuff to help out with the lower back for as mobility and movement and some passive recovery, but then they never get to the next level of actually doing exercise, which really is going to put the most uh, tension on the core and really start to um, get everything firing and working properly and getting you the strength that you need to have longevity in your lower back. Plus, it's going to help hit other areas that we're concerned about as well. So, the things that we want to do is make sure that we have really good form. Uh, I've noticed with my clients that once they've got perfect form and technique, that's when we can really start adding some weight and we can really start progressing and doing those things. But make sure that you have the foundation set before you start doing some crazy exercises. So I wanna teach you some basic movements and make sure that you're doing those properly and be very diligent on doing those all correct. And then that's when you can really make some good results and some progression forward with your lower back. So we're gonna start off with a box squat. All right guys, so box squat, um, like I said, when we have lower back pain, we wanna start being able to do squats. We squat all day, right? So if you can go through the day without squatting, then you probably shouldn't train for it. But since we do squat all the time, we wanna make sure that we can do that and we can do it safely. Box squat is, is a great way to start out learning how to do a squat. For one reason is, is, is going to counteract you. So having the weight forward allows you to set back into a better hinging pattern. Uh, and then it also engages the core, which you want to start obviously activating that core and activating those muscles of the back. So for some people, this does cause some discomfort in the lower back, but for most of my clients that have had lower back pains, lower back surgery, anything that goes on it, goblet squats are a great way to start to learn how to do a squat. So one thing is, is if you do pick this up, I like to set this on something that's a little bit higher for my clients to pick up. If you're going to pick it up off the floor, you're going to want to make sure that you use good form and that you're not using that lower back. So have it higher here. We're going to bring it up to right next to our arms. We're going to keep our arms squeezed together and keep this close. The farther we have something away, an object away from our body, the more unsafe it is and more stress is going to put on our lower back. So we're going to keep this right here. We can do this with a dumbbell and we can also do it with a, a, a kettlebell. So, goblet squat, I'll do this from the side angle so you can kind of see. We're just gonna hold this close to us, and what's nice about it, this is gonna give us a landmark to push our hips back. We're gonna stop, drive through those skills, right back up, squeeze those glutes. We wanna activate those glutes and start to train all those. And see, this puts me in good form. So, eventually, once I've built up some strength, built up some core strength, and taught my body good form, I can take this box away, and I can start to do regular squats. So we're gonna use a trap bar squat. Not every place has this, but if you have access to this, I would definitely say doing this. Um, barbell loaded on the spine could definitely be contradictive for people that have lower back pain. So I'm not saying that it's impossible to do, but just saying this is gonna be a lot safer because it's gonna generate force onto the sides of the body, not quite so much spinal loading. Also, if it starts to hurt, you have the option to drop it, which on your back is obviously a little bit more difficult to get off there. So this is a great way. I also suggest if you have lower back pain, just because the lower it is, is gonna cause a little bit more forward flexion that putting it on some bumper plates or, or elevating it a little bit will help out your lower back a lot so this is going to be kind of between a squat and a deadlift for say but the main cues on this is just making sure that your back is nice and neutral just kind of like we did on the box squat but since we don't have that box to sit back it's going to be very uh, important that we keep our spine nice and neutral um, and everything in, in great position so first thing we're going to do is get about a hip width apart we're gonna grab here, we're gonna kinda of like we're taking the slack out of this weight, and that's gonna activate our back. And what that's gonna do is help lock in our spine and keep us in good form and kinda of keep that chest up nice and proud. So we're gonna lock in here. Chin is gonna be lightly tucked, so not too tucked, but once again, you don't want that pez neck like that because that can put a lot of pressure on your cervical spine, and it's also going to um, activate the whole spine all the way down uh, to our tailbone. So light uh, bend in our, in, our, in our neck forward, light chin tuck taking the slack out of here and we want to make sure that our tibia and our torso are in the same alignment so they should equal the same direction the same alignment of each other chin tuck up squeeze and right back down okay like chin tuck so I would actually focus on something slightly diagonal in front of you and down make sure you squeeze the glutes on the way up and then you have nice and controlled movement throughout the whole exercise once again, any pain, stop, don't continue any farther. Okay, so 
we're going to now show you pull-ups, right? So, uh, like I said, it's important to set the foundations and then you can grow upon them. So obviously, maybe doing body weight pull-ups may be very difficult in the beginning for some people. Uh, pull-ups is one of the actually hardest exercises and one of the most functional upper body lifts that we can do. So, I would suggest maybe doing band-assisted pull-ups or using a machine-assisted pull-up to start in the beginning and then just progress from those. But the same uh, cues and uh, proper technique is going to be the same throughout either one. So I'm just going to show you through this real quick. So what we want to do here is just get a nice wide uh, grip. You can do them under grip as well. The big keys on this is that you want to pull your shoulder blades together and act like you're touching your elbows behind your back. You're going to pull the bar to the top of the chest. Okay and then squeeze those shoulder blades and touch those elbows behind your back. So you see a lot of times people doing this here. You wanna make sure it's more like a lat pull down and you're creating a W with your arms. Up, top of the chest, all the way back down. You wanna make sure that it's nice and slow and stretch and then all the way back up. Squeeze and controlling the eccentric motion down, up, and then really pulling those elbows behind. That way we're using our lats and we have good form. Core is nice and tight uh, and that will help protect our lower back as well. The most functional lift that we can ever do is a push-up. This is a great core exercise so it's like doing a plank which will obviously help out that lower back. Uh, also help stretch out and kind of keep control of the hips but some just big cues on a push-up is you want to start about shoulder width apart. You can use a mat here. I'm going to turn this around. You can use a mat here if you want for some support or just go on the ground. But the big thing here is keeping your back nice and straight, all one unit down. And you're going to push your elbows out to the corner of the room. So you want to go at a 45 degree angle. Not out here like a lot of people do, out to a 45 degree angle, making a triangle. Your elbows to your head, pushing through. Almost a full extension, but slight bend in the elbows down. You want to come down to that 90s. You're almost kissing the ground here. Push up, okay? So one thing is, is when you're doing this, a lot of times you want to bring your head down because your eye says bring down closer to the ground. Make sure you're nice and straight the whole time. Pushing all the way through, squeezing the chest at the top. Nice core. If you end up feeling a little fatigue in your lower back, raise your ass up versus putting your butt down. You don't want to have that lower dose in your lower back because that's going to cause a lot of pain. You need to modify it or incline it. Okay, so um, rows we want to start doing, like I said, we want to get into our basic lift. So we've re you know, we went through the phases, we strengthen up our lower back, we strengthen up our core, we're starting to, to re-educate and engage our glutes. Now we're just going into a basic row. I would suggest doing it where you are supported in the beginning. Um, that way you can start to kind of build up the strength in us. So using a bench, doing a one-arm row is a perfect way to do that. Things on this cue is you want to make sure that you're nice and straight, that you're not having an arch or curved over, and they pulling towards your hip. So not here where we're getting a lot of shrug, pulling towards your hip, slight bend in the elbow so it's not locked out and have a nice core. This will pull a little bit on one side since you're doing that, which is great because it's anti-rotation so we're still building up our core. Once you've graduated from doing those, you can get into uh, dumbbell bent over row or barbell bent over row. This is going to put a little bit more stress on your lower back because you have forward flexion. So a huge thing on this one is not bending over here. Push your hips back into the starting position just like you would do a deadlift or the beginning part of a squat. So push your hips back, keep your chin tucked and then pulling at about a 45 degree angle, squeezing your back together. Once again, make sure you always set those weights down comfortably. If that puts a lot of pressure on your lower back, then do more of a supported row. That's just start building you up.